Hello. My presence on the stage today is an honor for me. Listening to all of these wonderful stories and amazing stories and ideas of transformation. However, what is transformation? It is the transform of a nation. But have our nation really transformed? Or are they in a process of doing so? Have they become more than a common religion or language or history? Have they really transformed into an entity of global citizens, irrespective of their color or gender or national origin? In its transformation, our nation is per perceived through the witness of the weakness of a woman and the brutality of a man and a stereotype for gender roles and the insecurities for the individuals in portraying his or her own potential. And the list goes on. But if we look deeply, despite of all the challenges and in spite of all the suffering, many people made it. Martin Luther King led the civil rights movement. Nelson Mandela's figure was linked to anti-apartheid. Gandhi found in peace the only way to peace. Mother Teresa became the global icon for selfless services to others. Eleanor Roosevelt made the contribution to human rights a topic she campaigned throughout her life. These people became symbol. They lived for a cause and dedicated their life for that cause. These people became modeled for people who want to be free and a dream to be free. It all started with shifting the self with their insights toward their existence. Their existence as a means of living and not only survival, because making a life is not the same as living a life. These people transformed their nation with the transformation of the self. Yes, their own self-transformation transformed their nation. But what about you and you? And you, what about me? What about us all? Have we ever asked ourselves this major life question and be honest with ourselves? Do we have the ability and the courage to transform? Have we ever tried to build our nation as we really aspire or we resist a change? In response to all these questions, I would like to share with you some of my life personal experience that I believe many of you might have encountered. I faced a lot of challenges where society, culture, and sometimes religion put me in a box on a daily basis. I had to live with a lot of limitations for a self. And I had to force that self and I suppress that self instead of releasing the freedom to fly. And in many, many times, in many times, in many times I had to suppress that feeling and I have to confront the society of the question, the society question, which is, are we able to transform and about my identity? And the question is, how can a scattered identity transform into real and authentic identity. I had a lot of hesitations about my daily life routine. My divorced mom, who's living on the other part of Earth with the endless sorrow in eyes and a feeling of incapability of doing anything, has it a lot of hesitation about life expenses, the unpaid bills, the work demands, and the most challenging was the struggling or the striking of a life balance between family and work. My mind got a lot of mixed up and a lot of hesitations about the society and a jumbled question of that society who asked me left and right with no room for one's privacy. How can the daily assignment of being a mother ignore the existence of a working lady? Why? Why is it awkward for this working woman 
to be a devoted mom. I had a lot of challenges in answering these questions. But I have to get back to myself and ask myself a very important question. If I'm transforming positivity and positively, and I'm not harming anyone in the society, so why am I being opposed? I think of myself as a caterpillar who is transforming into a butterfly because this is my natural existence. However, the society decides to take my larva off. But I had to face all of these challenges. I went back to myself. And it, I changed, it changed all these challenges. They changed my view to the world. It made the twist. There is always a starting point. The point that I started to listen to my inner voice. The moment that I started to see the community in my own eyes from the self and not from the eyes of the others. The moment that I started to see pain in others and respect it. The moment that a hungry child and a tortured prison and a violent woman and a homeless man matter and mean to me. The moment that I refuse to create an incomplete single story about Das Cookie's salesman who used to visit the university when I was a student. I look at that person as a full identity, as a full human identity. That person where the society calls him the nobody. Each one of these stories taught me a lesson. And all of these stories, they signal my transformation. After all, transformation starts an imagination from derived and derived its model from the real life suppression. And I had a lot of values that let me stand out in the society. And it's funny that some of these values, I had it from a fairy tale. You're all familiar with the story of Cinderella. It draws a very beautiful image about the world. It is amazing how the rich prince married the poor Cinderella, irrespective of the social status and her poverty. She wanted to go to the ball so badly, and she wished herself a courage and a dress. She wanted to go to that ball, and she thought and believed that having a dress and having a ride will get her a prince, falling to anticipate that the prince wanted her for herself, for whom she is. Apart from love, which is the true thrive from this story, false expectation and social status became secondary revealing the essence of understanding and a human companionship. Her wish made her transformation. And this is what I tell for my daughter every day when I tell her this fairy tale, that we need to dream, and we need to dream big, and we need our dreams to come true. And this is what I keep telling her and telling myself about the insignificance of discrimination and social status. Because we all are alike. We all are humans. And not even a fancy dress could define us. For me, being a daughter, a wife, a mother, a lawyer, an educator defines my identity, but does not restrict it. I am a human rights defender, a defender for humanitarian existence. Because the identity is something that we choose and not what was born with us. And it happens that I'm a woman and I'm perceived by man. But let me tell you something. I have no desire to be equal to man. We are not equal, but we should have equal opportunities. What you can do, I cannot do. And what I can do, he cannot do. Together, we can make the world better. Please, recognize our difference. We are not in a battlefield. We complete each other and do not compete 
each other. It's all, it's all about equity and not equality. And that was my mental shift. And I've learned, I've learned to set aside my negative thoughts. And I've learned that failure lies in mind and not in success. I've learned not to judge the other as judgment is the definition of the self and not the other. I've learned to change my weaknesses to strength. And I've learned to live by my positives as a final desired destination. I've learned to stick by people who lift me up. And I've learned to teach life for my students and get empowered from their energy and to let them jump because what really matters is how you make them feel and not only what you do or say to them. And I have decided, I have decided to build my self-confidence. I have decided to build a loving attitude. I have decided to stand for injustice. And I have decided to live the differences with the others and not to defeat these others and to share the common stories with these others. I have decided to change the perception that we women are ignorant. It is the ignorance of treating women. I have decided to learn, and I learn a lot. And I have learned that there is no right and wrong. And every time I do something with an open heart, the power of righteous is always with me. And I understand why men and women are alike but not equal, because both of us are human and neither man nor woman want to be judged or discriminated or even stereotyped. This is my daily doctrine. My identity is not held hostage by the society. I created my own culture. Let's be positive with ourselves. Let's think positively. Oh, my name is not my choice. They named me Khulud, and Khulud means eternity. And I have decided that all these values will stay eternal till the last day of my life. My name is a human. My nationality is a humanity. My age is counted by all the moments where my dignity is respected. I am a human being with a special power to love and be loved. I am that butterfly who decided to get rid of the larva and be a butterfly flying in a sky of freedom, screaming with one voice, justice, equality, liberty, freedom, and humanity are my identity. Thank you so much. <laughs>